greetings 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 to you all um generals greetings to you all royals good morning good afternoon good evening to others how are we today happy sunday happy sunday hope we are all doing great hope we all had a beautiful week hope we all enjoyed our week it's yet another beautiful insightful you know powerful sunday for some insights of god's word you know so happy sunday once again we are rounding up the month and i hope you have been so blessed this month of september and i hope you you have been enjoying the month you know enjoying the blessings okay so we are here once again for another beautiful sunday to share the word of god like we always do you know and we came right on time we came right on time okay so without even wasting time royals without wasting time you know i want us to have a very uh, um quick message that will be so powerful and i can guarantee you that when we are done with this message our lives will never be the same so once again i want to say i greet you all in the name of our lord jesus christ happy sunday okay so this is Rati shalom royals like can we always do you know every time i will share this the importance of you know appreciating god thanking him honoring him you know being grateful to him at all times so like we always do i would like us to take this opportunity at this very moment to just be grateful to god be grateful for his love for us be grateful you know for all the great things that he's doing in our lives be grateful for that which we have just be grateful just love him just thank him okay thank him for your life you thank him for the fact that you know you are his child you are born again and if you're not born again today is going to be a great opportunity for you to give your life to christ okay so right now let us just go ahead and appreciate god let us just go ahead and thank him honor him tell him how great he is with your grateful heart father we thank you Go ahead and speak in tongues if you speak in tongues. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you for your praises. Lord, we are grateful for all that which you're doing in our lives. Lord, we are grateful for life. We are grateful for divine health. We are grateful, oh God. Yes, that we are victorious. We are conquerors. Lord, we are grateful that we overcome at all times lord we are grateful for you for the strength that you give us we are grateful for encouraging us we are grateful at all times father we are grateful we thank you for our families oh god we thank you oh god for our jobs we thank you for our businesses lord we thank you for the great future we thank you for our destinies Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful, O oh God, for supplying us always. We are grateful, O oh God, for protecting us always, protected, uh, protecting us from evil, protecting us from unreasonable men, protecting us, O oh God, from all wickedness. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we are grateful. Grateful, O oh God, that you give us ideas. Grateful, O oh God, that you give us a purpose for living. Grateful, O oh God, that we do your work with milkness and gladness. Father, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful we thank you we honor you we thank you father even for this very moment this morning this afternoon this evening oh god as we share your word may we receive that which you've prepared for us oh god lord we thank you oh god thank you for your presence even now in the name of jesus lord we thank you because of this message our lives will not be the same again lord we thank you for the transformation of your word in our lives in the name of Jesus Lord we are grateful 
in jesus mighty name we pray amen glory to god hallelujah wow what a beautiful sunday already we are in a very beautiful sunday hallelujah okay so without wasting time i just want us to go straight to the message okay i don't want us to be distracted by anything or have any technical issues whatsoever i'm just praying by the spirit of god that we will just run everything smoothly we'll share the message very quick quick very brief and it will be so hot in such a way that you know we will just be changed glory to god okay so the title of the message oh man last week we had a beautiful uh a word feast royals i was so blessed by the word feast that we had last sunday and you know what watch our youtube channel at fountain insights tv I, have been, I was so blessed. I listened to that message for so many times. And I tell you, I received a special word for me. And I had to smack myself on my forehead. I'm like, wake up, you know. So the message was really powerful. We thank God for the message. We thank God for the word. What can we be without the word of God, Royals? Glory to God. So let us always stay encouraged and stay in the word every time. Okay, so the message for today, the time of the message that the spirit of god dropped in my spirit was rolled stone and in my mind i was like okay god um are these not the messages that we preach during easter times and so forth you know because we know when it's easter then we talk about the resurrection of jesus christ we talk about the roll the rolled stone we talk about you know his reason and so forth and the spirit of god said to me hello the resurrection of jesus christ the crucifixion of jesus christ his uh, uh um excuse me his challenges and everything that he went through we talk about it every single day the roll the rolling of the stone what happened on that day and so forth is what we ought to meditate on every day so that we can remind of, uh, remind ourselves of what god and uh, what jesus did for us glory to god and the title says rolled stone so i was like holy spirit how am i going to put this message together and have the scriptures where do i start like where to what do i do here and the spirit of god said you just sit down listen to me pay attention open your ears open your heart your spirit i'll give you what to share and i'm like okay let's go let's get into it you know so that's how the spirit of god gave me some messages i mean some scriptures that i would like us to share very quickly and there are there are not much scriptures but they they are a bit long because they are more of like the whole story passage paragraphs and so forth so we want to look at it and not to miss anything at all okay so let us look at matthew so we are starting right away so we want to look at the book of matthew matthew chapter 27 okay so we are looking at uh, matthew chapter 27 um verse 57 to 66 so we are going to be taking the niv version today you know when i was reading the scriptures studying the scriptures meditating on them you know i was looking at so many different versions but when i looked when i was reading on the niv version it became easy on me and i was understanding what the spirit of god was saying to us you know for the message uh, for for this particular message today so i want us to look at matthew chapter 27 now we are looking at the the burial of jesus christ so we're going to take some passages right and then we want to talk about this rolled stone the stone that was rolled you know and what happened to it and then we'll get to learn something from this rolled stone today i'm also i i i'm also looking forward to hear the message as an individual and I mean, as a person, I also want to hear where this message is going to go to today because even me, myself, I was like, Holy Spirit, you do your part. I'm just available to open my mouth and speak. 
like you said but this message today you know as i was preparing it it actually took me to another level of some insights of god's word of some revelation i began to to think differently you know i observed that i was challenged in my spirit to see things beyond to to explore expand my 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 spiritual eyes to expand my vision to expand my my mind you know to expand to just open up my spirit and my ears more so i can hear i was challenged to get to know deeper about god more than what i know of. and let's read it matthew um 27 right we're looking at from verse 57 as evening approached there came a rich man from Arimathea, uh, from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus, uh, for Jesus' body. Now remember Jesus was now, like he had already been crucified, you know, by then he had died already. So now, after all the things that he went through remember last week if you remember when we were talking about like when or during the wet feast there was a time when we shared of how jesus was crucified you know we spoke about the challenges that we went through to a point whereby he said god if only you can take this cup away from me and as he was talking about the challenges that he had already seen coming now jesus is dead uh, Joseph from Arimathea who was very rich apparently uh, apparently the guy was rich you know and they saw that he was the guy who deserved to take the body of Jesus Christ because of his money you know because of his wealth because of who he was of course that means he was able to sustain the body of Jesus if he had to in terms of like uh, making sure that the body is nicely kept there nicely laid down and the the the, the the stone i mean the tomb is nicely arranged neatly prepared for jesus he could afford to do it for jesus now and Pilate ordered that it began i mean it be given to him joseph took the body imagine joseph had the opportunity to take the body of jesus christ listen to this joseph took the body wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock so now this joseph had already prepared a clean tomb for him i'm sure that place was super nice super beautiful you know the way he arranged it the way he he, he prepared the rock cut off the rock and everything i can imagine the the expense of cutting a rock as hard as the rock is but for you to have that machine that can cut that rock and make that round roll stone that will close the the tomb and so forth i'm sure he must have had really enough money to 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 afford all those right and then he says that he rolled so what did he do and joseph took the body wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock he rolled a big stone in in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away mary Magdalene and the other mary were sitting there opposite the tomb so now he put the body of jesus there prepared everything and rolled the stone right the next day the the one um the one after preparation day that was the one after preparation day the chief priest and the pharisees went to Pilate, say and then they say say uh, uh, say they said we remember that while he was still alive so now th that deceiver said so jesus is dead but he's still making some noise royals jesus is no longer there now he's dead but still they're they're threatened by the words that he spoke while he was still alive they are threatened by the things that he did while he was still alive they are threatened by all the things that he spoke they're still thinking of them even though they they know he's dead now you say they said we you, you we remember that while he was still alive that deceiver said after three days i will rise again so they were not sure of themselves so give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day otherwise 
his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first one. Take a guard, Pilate answered, go and make the tomb and secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and, post, uh, and posting the guard. So now, they now, what did they do? They went to, to, to even seal the, the, the tomb just to make sure that this place is properly closed. This guy inside here is not going to come out. This person inside of here is not going to, uh, uh, they, they're not going to come in and steal the body and tomorrow they say, ah, he rose from the dead, yet we're not going to see him. But listen to this. Remember that Jesus Christ is the Jesus of his word. He's God and God, our God himself is God of his word. He doesn't lie. He doesn't deceive. He's God of his word. So now, so they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. They even put security guards on that stone, that big stone in his tomb. They put security guards to make sure that this body doesn't come out. We are going somewhere. Listen to this. Now, let's look at Mark. We are going to be taking the NIV version today because I found it so interesting when reading it. You know, Mark, we're looking at Mark chapter 15. Now, remember, they have put on the bodyguards. They have secured the place like as in a law. This body mustn't come out. May, may Mark 15 verse 42 to 46. We're looking at the NIV. Let's see what happens. Now we're still talking about the burial of Jesus, right? Listen to this. Listen to what Mark is saying. Okay, I need to quickly do this. My apologies for that. I need to put this on silence. Okay, there we go. Now, we're still on the burial of Jesus. Mark 15, 42 to 46. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council. He was a prominent member of the council. See how big the man was. Who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God. Went and boldly, uh, uh, went boldly to Pilate. He went boldly to Pilate. He was bold to go and approach that same Pilate who said, let him, okay, take him. Do whatever you want with him. And ask Je uh, Jesus for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. He was like, ooh, so the, the, the man is already dead who claimed his the son of God, who claimed he's God himself, who claimed he has all the powers, who claims, oh yes, he performs miracles. Oh, so the guy is dead. That was Pilate's attitude, you know. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So he gave away the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen clothes. So Joseph went to buy some linen clothes, expensive linen clothes. Can you afford some expensive linen cloth for Jesus? Ha! This touched me. I said, God, which level am I functioning in now? Can I afford an expensive linen? That I can even use maybe to even dress myself. To dress for Jesus. Can I? I said, God, I ought to be like this man. Who even had an opportunity to buy the expensive linen cloth for Jesus. He gave the body to Jesus. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body. Huh. He took down the body in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb he rolled the stone against the entrance of the stone of the tomb brother he then rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb so he rolled 
the stone against the entrance of the tomb. That was closing the tomb. Higher. He closed the tomb. Hi. I tell you, when you read one book of the Bible, like a, a specific book is not enough. You need to t go through all the books so that you can get different revelations from them and you get to understand better, you know, because the way Matthew explains it, this is different from the way Mark explains it and even John and so forth. So you need to look at in both angles and look at it in, 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 in all the books so that you can understand and get to receive some different revelations. You see that? So now you see that. Let's look at Mark. Now we're still on this rolled stone. Let's look at Mark now we want to look at mark chapter 16 verse 1 to 20. okay so we're going to be very fast as we are taking it now we are on mark listen to this and this time jesus is risen remember the stone was rolled when the stone was rolled, that means Jesus, it was, gone, it was now over with Jesus. Right? And remember, in the book of Matthew, it says that they even had to go and seal the tomb. You know, put more stones. Put even security guards to say, man, this person mustn't come out. They mustn't steal the body. Lest they lie and say, this person is risen from the dead when the sabbath was over now we are in the book of mark 16 when the sabbath was over mary magdalene the mother of james and salome bought spices sorry the mother of james mary magdalene and salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint jesus Jesus body so Mary Magdalene remember when they were rolling the stone when Joseph was rolling the stone the rich man right when Joseph was rolling the stone Mary Magdalene was there and those other women who really loved Jesus now this this Mary Magdalene decides man I'm gonna wake up early in the morning go to Jesus body I want to anoint the body And then the Bible says, very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they went on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? Kayabaye. We are getting somewhere. Mary Magdalene rose early in the morning for the body of Jesus Christ and then said, on their way there with others now she remembers that that stone was heavy Hi. holy spirit she remembers that man that place was sealed now i want to go and anoint the body of jesus but now who's going to roll the stone away for us but when they looked up they saw now there's something that i picked from mary mcgodley who woke up early she was a woman who was determined ladies what time do you wake up in the morning do you wait for the sun to come out before you wake up what kind of a wife are you what kind of a woman are you you know what kind of how do you handle things in your life when do you handle things? When do you attend to situations in your life? Look at Mary Magdalene. Mary rose early in the morning because she wanted to go and anoint the body of Christ. But now she remembers that man, that stone was heavy and it was rolled against the tomb and it was so heavy. Who's going to help? Who's going to roll the stone away? Little did she know that there were angels 
who were prepared, who were ready to do the work. Now, before I even go ahead of the anointing right now, let's check this. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone which was large had been rolled away. While she was worried about the stone, that who was going to roll the stone away, there she looks up and she sees, man, the stone that I'm worried about, this big stone that was heavy, this big stone that was before me, that I saw before me, has already been rolled away. Who rolled the stone away? Who rolled the stone away, Kadabaya? As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. They saw the man, they saw the young man dressed in a white robe that was an angel. So what does that mean? So the angels came and rolled the stone away. Don't be alarmed, the young man said. He said, you are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified? He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going, he is going ahead of you in Galilee. He says, go and tell them that Jesus is risen. He's no longer here. He's, he has gone ahead. He's gone already. He's going to look for them. Listen to this. Don't be, I'm saying, you are looking, okay, we have read that. He is, go, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Just as he told you before he died that I will rise again within three days. So now who rolled the stone away? The person who rolled the stone away was the angel. Trembling and bewildered, the woman went out and fled on the, uh, from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus remembered that same place, he had bodyguards and everything. But then the angels came and rolled the stone away, even in their presence. What kind of a stone is in front of you? What stone are you fishing? What kind of a heavy stone is right in front of you right now? You say, who's going to roll the stone away from me? Maybe you are worried like Mary McCadlin who's saying, okay, I want going to unknown the body of Jesus. But then who's going to roll the stone away from me? Who's going to help me roll the stone away? What type of stone is in front of you right now? Whether in your body, regards to your health, what stone are you facing right in front of you against that tomb of the situation? What type of stone is right in front of you? Could it be the stone of your finances? Could it be the stone of your family? Could it be the stone of your marriage? Could it be the stone of your children? What type of a stone is right in front of you? It can be rolled away. The one for Jesus was rolled away by an angel. Those angels are still available even now. Yes, they still roll out the stones in our lives even now. And thank God for Jesus who rose from the dead. Because he conquered the grave. He conquered the stones. He rolled away the stones using the angels. He wouldn't have done it himself. Because this they will say, ah, this one is a fraudler. This one is a liar. He didn't fulfill his promise. He said... Within this time, he's going to arise. Within this time, he's going to do this. But now look what he did. He did it himself. No, somebody had to do it in his behalf. The angel had to do that for the fulfillment of the scriptures. The angel had to do it so that they don't say, no, he robbed us. Because he was a man of his word. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form. Okay, we are now in verse 9. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven, uh, driven seven demons. That very same Mary Magdalene. You know, when Jesus touches your life, when Jesus makes an impact in your life, you will not let him go. Mary Magdalene was there for Jesus in all the situations. 
during the crucifixion, during the, 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 the trials and everything, he was, she was there. Even when they were rolling the stone, she was there. And she even went back for the body of Jesus. There she is again. She's looking for Jesus again. That very same woman. Why? Because she understands the connection that she received, what she took from Jesus, what she received from Jesus. She said, no, this man gave me something. She gave me, I mean, this man gave me liberty. This man gave me freedom. I ought to do whatever it takes just to make sure that his body is safe. Glory to God. That's Saint Mary Magdalene. He's meeting, she's meeting Jesus. So it says, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. May I be that Mary Magdalene whom Jesus will always appear first to. May Jesus appear to me first every time. When he's talking, may he appear to me first. May I hear his mess, his word first. May I be the first person to respond. May if he gives me an assignment, may I be the first to respond to the purpose. May I be the first to respond to the task. May I be the first to respond to everything that he asked me to do. That was Mary McCartney. After the, the, the connection, after the contact, after she received so much from Jesus, she understood the importance of being connected to Jesus. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. They this returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe, believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go into all the world, Calibra Sayabaya, and preach the gospel to all Christians. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whosoever does not believe will, will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will recover. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. Then he, the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Glory to God. So we are still talking about that road stone. Look at that. Then he appeared to them. He talks to them, tells them, assigns them, gives them an assignment, tells them what to do. And they had to respond, to go out and preach the gospel to all the, to, to everybody. Glory to God. Now let's take another one. Let's look at Luke. No, let's look at Matthew. I want us to see something. Matthew chapter 28, NIV version. I'll try to be very fast. Right. We are still talking about the stone. Hiya. You know, when I was meditating on these scriptures, as the Holy Spirit was talking, you know, I, I honestly was wondering what am I going to talk about, about this rolled stone. Listen to this. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came. Now remember we're talking about the road stone. From heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Rolled back the stone and sat on it. Rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The guards who were there shook. They were frightened because of what they saw there, the lightning that came, took place there, the rolling of the stone there, the world activity that took place there. They couldn't understand anything. 
The angel said to the, to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. He is risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They, they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened. When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, uh, and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, "You are to say." His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this day. That's why you will hear, they will tell you, ah, Jesus was just a, an ordinary men like us you know um okay wait, which one is this method to an end they'll tell you jesus was just an ordinary man from and after all they stole the body and so because that story is still there even up to now but look at what happened they sold they had to pay the bodyguards who were there who saw everything who witnessed everything that happened they went to report and they said listen you are going to keep your mouth shut right now because it's a, there's a mess here everything is a mess because this person is the man of his word and he has done just what he said so now for us to cover up this whole thing you take this money tell them that jesus was stolen the body was stolen and the story is still there even up to now in other parts of the world like like you, you hear that saying that even especially with the jews then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where jesus had told them to go when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted then jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven on and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations and uh, nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and surely i am with you always to the very end of the age he said surely i'll be with you always to the very end of the age that was jesus right so the story of the stone you see it isn't it now let's look at john 20. i want us to see something this is so powerful so they wrote the stone was rolled by the angels you see that so meaning what does the stone symbolizes the stone symbolizes, you know, the guiltiness of, you know, of the, the, the sins of people, you know, the stubbornness of the challenges in your life. It can be anything at all that seems to be a stone at this stage while we are talking. Because remember, God gives us some insights every now and then. How you see the word has to be based on the, uh, on the spirit of God. The spirit of God has to communicate with you and gives gives you the picture of what it's saying so when i was looking at this road stone this stone situation i saw stone of of, of challenges stubborn situations in lives you know when you talk about cases you talk about the the generational cases and so all those things could be all those stones but anything can be rolled away it happened to Jesus. That rock step on situation. They will tell you in your family you're not gonna make it. They will tell you in your family you are cursed. They will tell you in your family there are different types of uh, 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 occultisms and you know all these ritual things that are done. They do all certain things and you cannot be successful in life until you follow certain ways of doing things. Those are stones right stones stones that are put against your life but then those stones can be rolled away from you because we have jesus who is a living who, who, who is who is alive and she is the man of his word jesus had to send the god had to send angels to go and roll the stone away do you think is there anything that is too hard for god no there's nothing that is too hard for god god can roll that stone away from you stone of 
negativity, stone of health. What is your, how is your health like? Stone of cancer in your body, stone of arthritis in your body. Whatever the situation, the blood condition, what does this the, the doctor say? The stone of every situation in your life that you feel like this thing, I don't know if it's gonna move. No, it will move. Jesus said the stone, they said the stone was rolled away. Who rolled the stone away? The angels rolled the stone away. Glory to God. And they still do it even now. Anything that you feel like is a stone in your life can be rolled away. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still doing it, even today. Glory to God. So now listen to this. Now where are we? Early on the first day of the week, while it was still... Okay, that was May, we have read that. Let's look at verse 3. So Peter and the other disciples started to the, started to the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciples trained Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent, he bent over and looked in, right? At the strips of linen lining there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lining there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' bed. I mean, head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Separate from the linen. The clothes that Jesus was wearing were there, they were folded separate from the linen remember the linen is the one that joseph bought the expensive linen right finally the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside his soul and believed the city did not so these people here as much as they were hearing that jesus is is risen they still couldn't believe it now mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Right? They asked, Hey, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Ah. She turned. Jesus was standing there, right where she was looking for. Jesus was there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. How many times do we cry for help? How many times do we cry and say, Jesus, where are you? As I'm going through this situation. How many times do you cry and say, oh God, where are you in my life when this is happening? But then she didn't know that Jesus was right there with her. Jesus was right there with her. Glory to God. Do you have spiritual eyes that can see Jesus? Ooh. Can you see him? Because you are crying for the solution. But the solution is right there with you. The word is in your mouth. The solution is there with you. But you can't see it. And the solution is you giving your life to Christ, knowing him. Oh, I'm trying to hold myself. You know, when I was meditating on this message, it got into me so deep. I said, God, do we see you when we are asking for help? But he said, I'm inside of you. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That means he dwells inside of you while you are looking around like Mary and Kathleen. He's just beside you. Glory to God. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Thinking he was, you know, they had stolen him. But he was there. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabban, Rabban, which is, means teacher. So remember, Mary McCartlin already had a connection with Jesus. That is why she was ever worried about the uh, Jesus body. She went to the tomb. She woke up early. She was going around. And then that's when she observed that the stone was rolled away. When she heard the voice of Jesus, she jumped and she knew that was Jesus. And she said, teacher, that means she knew the voice of Jesus. 
Do you know the voice of Jesus when he's calling? Can you hear the voice of Jesus when he's calling you? When he tells you, don't go, do you hear him? When he says, don't jump, do you hear him? When he says, go ahead and move, do you hear him? When he says, open your mouth and talk, do you hear him? When he says, pray, do you hear him? When he says, don't talk, do you hear him? That is, those are the things that are very important in our lives. That we need to know the voice of Jesus. Do you know the voice of Jesus? When he's calling, can you hear? Like Mary Magdalene. Oh. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. He's telling Mary Magdalene that go and tell them that I'm ascending to my Father who is your Father, my God who is your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. I said, God, can I be that Mary Magdalene all the times? Can I hear you? all the time what an honor for you to be told by jesus what to say for you to be sent by jesus i said can i be that woman whom god will say Rati, go and preach to this person she needs help and i will hear immediately and i'll go and do it can you hear can god and can jesus entrust you with the assignment of going to send the message Mary Magdalene was entrusted with the message. Go and tell them. Can you tell them? Can you hear the voice of Jesus? And can you be asked to send out the message? Through your purpose, through your assignment, through your job, through your business, through your family, through your ministry. Can Jesus send you? Will you be available? Are you there? Can you respond to the assignment? Like Mary Magdalene, who said, Jesus, I will go and tell them. Because in all the passages in the Bible, from Mark, from Luke, from John, Matthew, the books that we are reading, you see that every time it was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. This Mary Magdalene, who had a connection with Jesus. Jesus said, do not hold on to me. Told the God, Mary Magdalene went, right, on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors lo locked for fear of Jewish leaders. Now they were scared that we don't know how true it is that Jesus is, is, arise, I mean, is alive, is risen. Now they said, let's lock the doors, everything. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Where did he enter? Where did he enter? The doors were locked. Remember now we talk about the rolled stone. The stone was rolled, the angels rolled the stone away. And he entered. I mean, he came out. But now, there again, the disciples locked the doors. They're like, man, we don't want trouble here. We don't know how true it is. Let's lock everything. Then he appears to them inside and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sat inside the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the lord now they needed evidence there are some of us even up to this day who still need evidence is jesus still alive that reminds me of an encounter that i had this morning of um something that i uh, uh, you know when i was on my way to church the driver that was taking us to church he asked a question that was that seemed to be very stubborn when I, when, I, when I saw it. I knew that that was a proof of the message that the Spirit of God ministered to me for today, Roadstone. To me, that message as he was asking me, I felt that that was exactly the stone. He said, have you ever met God? He said, do you know him? And then he said, how does he look like? And then my, my answer was like, and I wasn't sure, I said, Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, I've never came across this kind of a question. What do I say? I said, God is a spirit and he is inside of me. He lives in me. That was my response. 
And then I was later on, I was like, you know, while we are talking about this now, I'm looking at the answer. As I'm sharing, I wasn't sure of what I was answering, but the answer is coming now. But he said to the, he said, that so, if you, he says now, what did he say? He said, peace be still, where are we? Let's look at it. Now he showed his hands. And with that, he prayed on, okay, listen to this. Peace be, after he had said this, he showed them his hands and said, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw him. So that means God is a spirit. How did he enter inside the house? He's a spirit. Because he's a spirit, he's not limited. He can be everywhere. He can do anything. Wherever he wants to be, he can be. He, because he's a spirit. Right? So now again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Now he's saying to them, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So he breathed the Spirit on them. That means God is the Spirit. That was a son that is a Spirit. Glory to God. So he, that is why he overcame the stone that was rolled against him. He came through the stone. He rolled away the stone because he is a Spirit. Ah. Now Thomas also you know when Thomas was, I'm not going to read that part. Thomas was very stubborn. He said, "Me, I want to, I want to put my fingers inside. I want to put my fingers inside." Jesus, ah, uh ah. -uh. Listen to this. Now I'm going to take from verse 28. Tom, I mean, I'm skipping other message. I mean, scriptures. I mean, verses. Thomas said to him, "My Lord and my God." Then Jesus told him, "Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believed." So blessed are those who have not seen but yet they believe do you believe he says blessed are you who believes so if you believe you are blessed if you believe you that means you are more blessed than the one who saw jesus on that particular day glory to god what a message Woo! let us look at matthew we are rounding up the scriptures right now matthew Shakala baye kila baya. Matthew 17, verse 20. I told you we're taking the NIV versions. Right. Woof. Holy Spirit. He replied, because you have a... It says, now, Jesus replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move. From here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. Do you believe? Do you have faith? This mountain is like a that stone, that strong stone. Whatever the mountain in your life, if you believe and you say move, it will move. It will be rolled away. That stone will be rolled away. Stone of situations in your life will be rolled away. Glory to God. As we round up. Let's look at the final scripture. Second Corinthians. This is the heavy one. Second Corinthians, uh, Corinthians chapter three. Verse one to 18. We're going to take it very fast. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Now, listen to this. We are rounding up this rolled stone. So now we understand why the stone was rolled away and how the stone was rolled away. And meaning there's nothing that is too hard for us. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. As we beginning to commend ourselves again, or oh, do we need like some people letters of recommendation that was paul right to you or from you you yourselves are our letter 
written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ. Your life is a letter from Christ. When people are looking at you, do they see Christ? Are you the written letter? Are you the written letter of Christ? Can people see you and say, truly God lives in this person? The results of our ministry written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on our table, tables, uh, tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Now it's no longer the tablet of the stone where Moses was writing down the tablets. It's now the tablet of your heart. Your heart, your human heart. Your heart as a human now is written in your stone. The tablet of your heart. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competency comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit of the letter, for the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Glory to God. Now verse 7. Now if the minister that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the first of Moses because of its glory. Transitory though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison, comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was transitory came with glory how much greater is the glory of that which lasts therefore since we have such a hope we are very bold are you very bold we are not like Moses are you very bold who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was pass, uh, passing away. But their minds were made down. For, the, for this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is taken away. That veil of ignorance, that veil of sickness, that veil of defeat, that veil of failure, that veil of, uh, uh, um, you know, trouble, that veil of curses, that veil of, uh, you know, rituals, that veil of, you know, uh, all the ancestral spirits and so forth. It says, where, but when it says, where are we? When you are in Christ, that veil is taken away, right? It says, but only in Christ is taken away. Only when you are in Christ, that thing is taken away. That means only when you give your life to Christ, only when you become for Christ, that thing is taken away. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces complete... Com contemplate the, the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the spirit glory to God so as we look we are more transformed as we stay in his presence we are more transformed glory to God so while you are in his presence that veil is taken away from you cannot come to you because you are you, you, have, you have fixed your gaze to Christ. That is why we, last week we spoke about you meditating on the word of God, staying in the word every time. Glory to God. So it's very important. Hallelujah. So you contemplate on the word of God. You contemplate on God's presence. And the more you dwell, the more you contemplate, you are changed. You are transformed. There is a glow. There is transformation in your life. Glory to God. So any stone can be rolled away. There's nothing that is too hard for God. He rolled away the stone. Jesus rose from the dead. And today we talk about Jesus. We still talk about the greatness of Jesus. And then he said, go out into the world and preach the gospel. He said that he commissioned us to go out. Glory to God. So you can go out and do great things. The stone was rolled away for a purpose, for a reason. You don't need to struggle anymore. Glory to God. You don't need to struggle anymore. The, the, the book of Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was bruised for our iniquities. 
glory to God. He was bruised for our sake and by his stripes we are healed. So when you have a condition in your body, by his stripes you are healed. Remember he got the scars. Everything was for our sake. Hallelujah. So if you are watching me right now and you are not born again, you say, you know what, Rati, I am blessed by the message, but I want to contemplate on that glory of God. I want to contemplate on the presence of God. I want to know Jesus. I want to hear his voice. I want to be sent by him. I want to be connected to him. How do I do it? You need to say the prayer of salvation. Only when you come to Christ will you with that veil be taken away from you. I want you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit right now. I declare that I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I am born again. Thank you for the remission of sins. I am the new creation now, the righteousness of God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. If you've said this prayer, I, I had to do it right away. I had to lead you to Christ right away. Glory to God. Congratulations, now that you have said this prayer, you are born again, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, glory to God, and you had to stay in his presence at all times, glory, hallelujah, without even wasting time, I would like us to right away just pray, round up, you know, I want to leave this message as it is, I don't want to say much, because I know the Spirit of God has really moved us, in a remarkable way today glory to god so father we thank you for the message that we received we thank you for the word we thank you father for you have rolled away the stone for us we thank you father there's no situation that is too hard for us lord we thank you that we hear your word we thank you that our spiritual eyes are opened our spiritual ears are opened lord we can respond to your message we can respond to your word at all times in the name of our lord jesus lord we thank you for your praises we thank you from this day, oh God. We can hear your voice very loud and clear. We can hear you when you talk to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, may we be available for you at all times by the power of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you even for the week ahead that we're about to enter. We are launched into greatness. We are launched into new greatness, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the understanding of the scriptures. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, that was so super powerful royals i am so blessed i look forward to hear this message who the road stone so much about the road stone he conquered the grave he conquered the grave he rolled away the stone for us glory to god have a glorious week ahead conquer go and do i mean do great things go and be in charge go and win royals you are an overcomer you are a victor in christ jesus hallelujah so we thank you lord for the word we are so blessed we are so blessed glory to god can you go to our youtube channel fountain insights tv and watch the messages these messages are so powerful and they're for us to be trained to be corrected you know in all the ways glory to god i thank god for this opportunity i thank god for this platform you know to go ahead and express his word in a remarkable way glory to god that is so powerful i'm super blessed by this hallelujah so without wasting time like we always do you know this is rati shalom i love you all so dearly happy sunday once again have a beautiful week like we always do we all like i always tell you i always say stay blessed stay connected stay in the word of god don't move an inch from the presence of god hallelujah god bless you have a great week and go and take church. See you next Sunday. I look forward for next Sunday already.